Welcome to Better Sex, where you get the information and inspiration to create and enjoy your best possible sex life. Join your host, sex therapist Jessa Zimmerman, as she brings you expert guests, helpful tips, knowledge, and strategies to improve your intimate relationships. And now, your host, Jessa Zimmerman. Hey everybody, it's Jessa and I'm back for another episode of the Better Sex Podcast. And I'm so glad you're here. Maybe you're back for another one too, or maybe this is your first time listening. But either way, I'm delighted that you've tuned in. Today's topic is interesting. I think about this. I have a lot of clients that talk about reading romance novels and they end up getting turned on, you know, because some of these are really well written and they respond to the stories and it's this way that they have to sort of enter a sexual space and, and activate what I call their reactive sex drive. You know, they may not feel spontaneous interest, but boy, once something starts to stimulate their body or their mind, there you go and they're interested in sex. And my guest today, Tian Kim Lam, has developed what she calls the Body Bookworms, which is a subscription uh, box that includes a romance novel or erotic fiction and a sex toy. And she's paired these together and she curates them and, you know, sends them out uh, to her audience and then even has a book club and discussion and, you know, is really trying to facilitate um, exposure to this material and support for women uh, not all women, but, you know, a lot of women to uh, explore their pleasure and to try sex toys that they maybe never would have tried or been open to. So it's really a fascinating conversation about how she got into this, how she chooses the things, how it works, and uh, what she's learned. Hope you enjoy. And before we start the show today, it is sponsored by Intimacy with Ease. It's a method to help otherwise happy couples achieve a sex life that is easy and fun for both of them. So that you can actually just enjoy your sex life with zero stress. For more information, if you want to watch a brief little training video that's available, all of that, go to intimacywithease.com. Tian Kim, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So let's start with how you got into this business. What, you know, how and when did you decide to start this um, sort of erotic subscription? Well, I've always enjoyed reading romance books. I started as probably in middle school, like way too young to be reading explicit (laughs) novels. But I think that's when a lot of us start are curious about sex and pleasure and for me, that was the one of the few ways I could learn about it was reading romance books. Uh-huh. Especially, they I was attracted to them because the women in there, they kind of, they wanted sex, they wanted pleasure, and they found ways to get it, which is not something you see a lot in the media. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, when I was younger. Right. And then, you know, when I was in my 20s, I started selling sex toys in the home parties. And Uh, it was like a whole new world. (laughs) Wow, like how come no one ever told me this stuff? (laughs) And along the way of trying out different vibrators, you know, because we all have to do a little research. Right, right, right. Home research. um, I actually started to learn more about women's bodies and pleasure and how the things I experienced was normal you know, things like not being able to achieve orgasm with penis and vagina sex. Right. Things like that. And I thought, you know, like other people need to know this stuff because we're not weird. (laughs) This is all normal. And we have to learn what works for us. And, and about, uh, I guess like three years ago, I had this aha moment. I'm reading a romance book. There's some great sex scenes. It's emotional. It's exciting. And I thought like, wow, like I get aroused by reading these. And I know like my friends get aroused by re- reading these. Like what if I provided the tools, right? You read the book and here are some products that will help you try out some of the things in the book. Yeah. So let me ask you, because I am not a romance novel reader. So do those portray female pleasure that way that most of the women need clitoral stimulation? And, or do they, you know, so much of TV and movies 
you don't see that, right? So I'm wondering, are romance novels different in that way, that they're a little bit more accurate and realistic? They, they have evolved a lot. So if you go back, a lot of times when people talk about romance books, they kind of talk down to it. And they call them bodice rippers, or they say they're, they're you know, very rapey. And if you go back to the 70s and 80s, and probably even early 90s, a lot of the romance books are kind of like that, because you know, that, that I think that's that was just indicative of the time. You, you found a, uh, a woman, found a man who had everything she needed, but she didn't know quite yet. And he had to, you know, quote unquote, convince her. Right. And now, you know, I took a long break reading romance books when I was in college because I didn't have time. And right. When I came back, I noticed that a lot of the ones I read, the for for those that are um, the heterosexual romances, the men always gave women oral first before they had any other sexual ah, interaction. Okay. And I thought, oh, wow, this is cool. Like this is new. <laughs> so I'm seeing more and more. And maybe it's the the books that I choose to read. Um, it's because it's a really wide genre. But I see more and more where the the male partner gives the female partner an orgasm before he has he has one or they have penetrative sex. Okay. I imagine the stories are pretty still diverse in terms of what's erotic because power play and some of that idea of forced sex, even though it isn't actually forced in our minds. I mean, you know, that's erotic still to a lot of people, male and female. Um, right. Right. And so I think I'd imagine can, that you still see a breadth of things in these, in these there's, literature, I mean, right? Anything you can think of just like, you know, there's sub genres. So there's like fantasy, contemporary, historical, and then there's different, I guess, kinks, so to speak. Right. right. Um, some people like, uh, there's a book um, I haven't read, but it's been recommended to me is Asking For It by Lila Pace. And it's about a woman who has rape fantasies. Like that's one of her fantasies she's always wanted to try. And she meets someone who will help her fulfill this fantasy, but it's all very consensual. And I right. think that's, to me, that's important. Like no matter what the fantasy is for the characters and the reader, like as long as there's discussion about consent, yeah, I think that that's, that's healthy. That's healthier, right? Right, right. So you mentioned, you know, like with a heterosexual romance where the, you know, the guy is going to go down on the woman, but are there, is there diversity in the kinds of couples and gender diversity and like, how, you know, how has that evolved and how does that fit into your subscription? Oh, that's a really great question. There is diversity, but not as much as there should be. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and historically, there's been a lot of gatekeeping by publishers and reviewers against queer books and you see more of them now because indie publishing or self-publishing is big in the romance industry because a lot of those writers are not able to be published by traditional publishers because the publishers say well that won't sell nobody wants to read about two women or two men falling in love so they just decide like I'm just going to publish it because the story needs to be out there mm -hmm. and you know, in the past few years in the publishing industry, there's been more uh, outcry for more diverse romances from everybody, from diverse, you know, from the publishers. Um, and it's a matter of knowing where to look to find them. And for me, that's always been an issue. So actually, just recently, I launched a new box, uh, an offering called the Body Quickie. And it's a monthly box, our regular boxes seasonal but our monthly box is only going to feature diverse romances so it's a diverse romance and then I pair it with an erotic toy uh-huh okay and where where are you finding all this I mean you must be spending I, I can see you know the listening audience can't see this but we have our cameras on and you've got a huge stack stacks of books behind you I do have a huge stack of books <laughs> I literally cannot read all the books that I want to read in time yeah. Um, I get a lot of uh, suggestions, recommendations from friends, romance book bloggers, uh, like Love and Panels is a romance book blog that focuses a lot on diverse romances of all types, gender pairings, sexuality uh, spectrums, um, racial, you know, racial uh, diversity. So mm -hmm. they cover a lot. And then I have friends that I talk to, and then I'm also friends with a lot of authors of color and diverse authors and I kind of see what they're doing and see how it fits because our the books I feature are usually um what we call high heat in the industry so there's explicit sex on the page as opposed to like they kiss and it fades to black yeah um, yeah yeah that's what that's what I like to read and that's what <laughs> my audience likes to read so that's what I look out for but there's you know no matter what you like on the the spectrum of what's how explicit the books are there are diverse romances out there 
Okay. And so how do you pick um, what goes in there, both the, the, the story and the product? Oh, um, my goodness. I think it's an art form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh, it's evolving as you've been into this business. So, you know, right now I pick books that I like, and I think that there's room for discussion because we do hold a virtual book club in our Facebook group. For each oh, book. okay. And so I want the book to be able to bring up, um, have, you know, good things, topics for our community to chat about. And then it's about like, can I, I find a product to pair with either the sex scenes in the book or the emotional arc that the characters go through something that ties it in. I kind of joke like they're like wine pairings, (laughs) but you know, a lot more fun. So it's not just a random, this sex toy with this book. I mean, you've got a reason for pairing these two things. Right, right. So our fall book is a historical romance by Sarah McLean. It's called Wicked and the Wallflower. And the, there's this, scene where they're sitting on this chair and I guess in the and that the time period there's a chair that's built where the two people can sit and they're not looking at each other but they can talk and here it's built so they can hear the other person so it, it doesn't look improper right okay. um, so they're in the secret garden and he's talking to her and he ends up coming over and giving her oral and and uh, so the toy I picked is called Little Hummer <laughs> Uh, so you know, I don't. I don't know if you know this. Like, hover is a as a can be slang for oral sex. Okay. Or an action you can give. Like you're um, when you're giving oral sex, you you hum, and it causes vibrations that can right. pass along to your partner. Yeah. Um, so that's the toy that I chose. And th- there's a whole thing about the male character who he isn't a big fan of um, dark spaces. So the toy actually lights up. There's an LED light in it that lights like, up when you turn it on. Okay. So it just depends on the book and what's happening in the toy, but I want to tie them as closely together as possible. Yeah, yeah. Hi, it's Jessa here, taking just a quick break. Thanks for listening so far. I wanted to let you know about the sex quiz that I've put together called How Healthy Is Your Sex Life? I've taken a close look at the typical ways that I see couples get into trouble with sex, including avoidance, neglect, negativity, distraction, and boredom. And the free quiz will score your individual results based on these factors. And then I provide my recommendations and ideas, including my top 10 sex tips, which will help you make instant improvement. If you'd like to take the quiz and see how healthy your sex life is, you can do it right now at sexhealthquiz.com. You mentioned the Facebook book group, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. And then how else you're interacting with the audience? Like what's the, what's the model uh, bigger than just sending this lovely surprise box? Sure. (laughs) Uh, So my, my big goal with doing this is just to create a space where women can openly speak about, talk about romance books with sex in it, talk about sex, you know, toys. Like I think in, in general, we don't always feel comfortable talking about those things in, in, in our personal spaces. Like you have, right. I don't know about you. Like when I meet a friend, like I have to like vet them to see like, are they the type to talk about sex? and <laughs> <laughs> Or are we just going to talk about, you know, like the weather? <laughs> so the space is there for that. And it's open to, to anyone who wants to join. So you don't have to be a subscriber. And oh, okay. we, you know, uh, we'll, people will share like their, current books are reading or if you're looking for a recommendation like I'm looking for a book about um men in kilts you know that are sexy or whatever and and people will jump in and 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 help out and then I will will have conversation starters like um have you ever tried vibrating panties like what's your experience so it's just a way to kind of kind of um jumpstart the conversation and and you know say hey this is fun like we can talk about this stuff every day right Right. And what what are some of the sources that people could find uh, erotic literature like this? You know, like, you know, you mentioned the blogger. Um, are there other places you send people for more resources that, you know, if they want more, you know, they're going faster than a book a season, <laughs> perhaps. Right, right. Well, we do. Ha- I do have members of my book group who read a lot. Like I have one person who reads 400 books a year. 
oh my gosh, <laughs> which I'm lucky if I hit a hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you should outsource some of the, uh, the reviewing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's why the group is great because the members are also recommending books to each other. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there are some major blogs out there. Um, Smart Bitches Trashy Books is a great romance blog, romance book blog. There is Smexy Books. So it's at S-M-E-X-Y. Uh, and uh, um, Women of Color in Romance is a, it's not a blog, it's a website that tells you all about books that are written by authors of color. Okay. And the if you're a Twitter person, there's a, what we call Twitter Romance Landia. And people are always sharing recommendations about their favorite reads. And so if you find a few authors that you like and you follow them on Twitter, if they're active on Twitter, they will definitely share recommendations. And that's what I like about this space is that people are really open about what they like and what they want to read because they know that readers are so hungry for more. Mm -hmm. right? It's like, I don't want to recommend other people's books because I only want you to read my book. Like, I don't ever get that sense. It's always like, <laughs> oh my God, look at this book. It's coming out. It's amazing. Like, you have to read it. <laughs> I would imagine the whole, like you were saying, the whole self-publishing phenomenon has, must have just created so much more material. Like, I, yes. I could almost imagine that you could have exhausted the romance novel genre before, but now there must be so many, so many people entering it and bringing in their own voice and their own stories and uh, yeah, and that's what makes it great. You know, you can, if you if you want to read, like you could name a topic or a kind of pairing and there's probably a book for it. And mm -hmm. I think that's also, you know, a downside is because you're not going to be able to read them all. I have a private chat group and everyone's like, look at this book about, there's a Hanukkah romance anthology coming out like, next week. I forget what it's called. I think it's like, uh, and I thought, oh my, my God, this sounds amazing. I haven't seen a lot of Hanukkah romances. Yeah. And so there goes my, you know, to be read list, like add another book to this list. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you learned about the community? I, you know, I, I'm wondering how much it's changed when, when you first had this idea to introduce it, you know, sort of based on your own experience and your own enjoyment, you know, how much is, has your understanding of the community changed over these few years? You know, has, has there been anything surprising to you about the audience? Uh, what surprised me is that how many people really want to try sex toys in the bedroom, mm. but they don't know where to start. And maybe I think it's because I've been in the space for so long. I just thought like, oh, well, this is what I will recommend. But they're they're um, not always ready to ask, even in our small Facebook group. Like yeah. They'll message me or they'll send an email um, and they'll say like, my partner wants to try this, but I don't know where to start. Or people think that one particular type of toy is going to be great for everyone. Mm. You know, I often get tagged in conversations like, I'm looking for a new sex toy. Like, what should I try? And I say, well, it depends. Like, what kind of stimulation do you like? Like, because, you know, I can say this rabbit style toy might work great for one person, but it's not going to do anything for another one. Right, right. I try to give more personalized, if they're willing to share, right? the particulars yeah and I can say well if you like that type of simulation then like try xyz toys yeah so it sounds like the the romance novel the erotic fiction is is the easy part for people like that's the entry <laughs> right and right the next toy is is wow you get this chance to you know introduce them to aids for pleasure that they might not have ever uh, pursued right Right. Especially yeah. if the book, the characters use sex toys, because not every book we choose, uh, the characters will be using sex toys. It's right. just kind of a, a stepping point to the conversation. Right. Right. And then what's your top, I mean, your top concern, I guess, when you're choosing the sex toy to put out or the, you know. Oh, goodness. So what I try to do is pick so I try to keep a different toy, you know, every box so that people can try something new. It's a good mm -hmm. way to, to kind of see what you like and don't like. Right. But I also want to choose packaging that is women friendly. So like no, like a half dress model on it. Nothing that says like, I don't know, like clip liquor. Like I want it to be <laughs> <laughs> just kind of non-intimidating and, 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 um, you know, something exciting and fun to use. Uh -huh. Those are big, big things for me. And of course, like something that is a, a good quality that'll last them for a while and not just a one-time use kind of product. Right, right. And and it sounds like, is is your subscription geared towards heterosexual um, uh, eroticism? It, like, or do you have a separate list for people that might want gay or lesbian or 
you know, anything else? Well, so far our books have all been heterosexual, but with the, the new monthly box, Body Quickie, I will be introducing different gender pairings. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's something for everybody, basically. Yes. Okay, great. Would you say, uh, you know, how can f- people find you? How can they subscribe? What is it? What does it cost? They probably are wondering okay, that. So they can go to bodybookworms.com and our quarterly boxes are thirty nine ninety five a quarter, which is not bad. And you can get um, the, you get at least $50 worth of product in it, yeah. usually more. Okay. And then our monthly box is twenty seven ninety five. And um, our first, the first box will be shipping very soon, so they can sign up and get there to first romances. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing this. I think it's going to be, you know, an interesting and ex- an exciting opportunity for people. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You've been listening to Better Sex. Please visit our website, bettersexpodcast.com, for show notes and additional episodes. And that's a wrap for today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are enjoying the podcast, if some of this material resonates with you and you would like to make a difference and make sure that this keeps coming out in the world once a week, ongoing, There are a couple things you could do to show your appreciation. The first would be to go to iTunes and rate and review the show. That really helps us be found by new listeners when you review the show on iTunes. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash iTunes. The other thing I want to invite you to consider is becoming a Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, you get some benefits. So for $2 a month, you get advanced access to every single episode. For $5 a month, you get a chapter of my upcoming new book. And for $10 a month, I host quarterly get to know you and question and answer chats over the web. And you get invited to that. I would love to have your membership in that become part of the Better Sex family. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash Patreon, which is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Again, thanks for listening. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to comment, ask questions, get in touch. I'd love to hear from listeners. Thanks. Thanks.